eventos son cada año. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here in another edition of the seminar on, uh, on applied mathematics and, and, uh, and the EDP. Our guests today are Professor Sophie Tarburush, I don't know how to, to spell, who will be introduced by Professor Rosana Lopes and uh, Professor Nicolas Carreño. Uh, introduced by Professor Mauro Rincon. I would like to say that this session is in honor of the International Day of Women in Mathematics, which will be celebrated on the 12th of May. So I wish you a great afternoon, and uh, please, Rosana, the work is, is with you. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Sandra and Juan, uh, to be the honor to uh, introduce our first speaker. Our first speaker is Dr. Sophie Tarburich. Uh, ella recibió su doctorado en teoría de control en el año 1991 y la habilitación para dirigir eh, investigaciones en 1998 de la Universidad Paul Sabatier, Toulouse, Francia. Actualmente es una pesquisadora justamente de dicha institución, la CNS de Toulouse, Eh, sus principales intereses de investigación incluyen el análisis y el control de sistemas lineales y no lineales con restricciones e información limitada. Sistemas híbridos dinámicos. Eh, ella es editora y es también eh, muy, muy llamada en todas las los, los revistas muy importantes del IEEE y tiene una producción científica tremenda, tremendamente grande. Les, les indico que luego de su charla, revisen cada una de sus investigaciones porque es muy, muy, muy interesante. El día de hoy, now, Sophie is going to give us a talk, interesting talk, about some ingredients on even tree control for some partial differential equations. Algunos ingredientes o en el control de eventos desencadenados para algunas ecuaciones diferenciales parciales. Dear Sophie, you can begin your, you can share your screen and begin your talk. Okay, thanks, uh, thanks a lot for, for this uh, uh, kind of introduction. So I will share my, my screen. Uh, pop, pop, pop. Screen, it's okay for you? It's okay. Excellent. My, my, and okay. Okay. So I am very happy to 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 have the opportunity to to share some some uh, recent results with my colleague uh, Lucie Baudouin and our PhD student uh, Florent Kudo Odd, and uh, we are working uh, currently on uh, event trigger control for uh, partial differential equations, in particular for wave equations and uh, we have extended the, the, the current results on the, the um, on the case of Schrodinger equations. So uh, okay in this uh, uh, presentation I would like to, to follow the, the classical uh, uh, following outline. Uh, first I will try to uh, define the general topic of event trigger control. Uh, and after I will focus on the uh, uh, partial differential equation. And therefore I will present some uh, 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 very quick result regarding the well-posedness and the existence of solution. And I will focus uh, uh, more deeply on the Zeno behavior avoidance and the uh, problem of stability of the closed loop system in particular exponential stability. If I have time, I will provide an illustrative example. And of course, I will conclude with some uh, uh, future perspective for this uh, kind of study. So the, the main topic of the, the talk is uh, in the context of system with uh, communication constraints. And uh, when we have to study a dynamical system with uh, a constraint, a constraints of communication or with limited information, uh, we need to develop new device, new tools, and new techniques in order to, to be able to prove that we satisfy uh, uh, stability, performance, or uh, uh, interesting uh, properties for the closed loop system. And uh, it is interesting to study this kind of system because uh, uh, currently in the society, we have uh, uh, the emergence of large variety of networks. 
uh, and these net networks are built from uh, communication links, uh, in particular, for example, the, the very uh, famous one, uh, uh, like the uh, uh, communication networks, like uh, uh, social network networks, like Facebook and Twitter and so on, uh, but also the, the problem uh, related to energy distribution networks, uh, the biological system, or the, the fleet of uh, satellites, uh, for example, uh, like in this picture. And uh, uh, the presence of um, computation or communication elements in the control loops uh, add some new constraints. And for example, we have classically the plant and the controller. And now in plus, you need to take into account the, the, how the communication between the plant and the controller can be uh, 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 taken into account. And uh, the objective uh, in this case, it is to revisit the problem of control by taking into account this kind of cons constraints. And uh, in general, in the literature, this kind of uh, system or this kind of uh, problems is uh, referred to the network control system or cyber physical system, if we can imagine that we have a very a complex uh, uh, device in the, in the system, um, for example, combining uh, human and, and machine uh, and so on. So the, the objectives, when we are uh, interested by computing, by studying the system with uh, limited information is the first one is to model the element of information. Uh, the second objective is to analyze the effects uh, due to the uh, information constraints on the performance, for example, or on the stability. And also, of course, to consider to, to be able to propose control strategies or uh, um, observation strategies uh, when the data used for the control purpose are transmitted via uh, some uh, uh, constraint channel of communication or maybe unreliable uh, channel of communication. And uh, the last problems, uh, the last problem uh, we have in mind is to design, to be able to design both the control loop and also the communication elements in the, in, the, in the loop. And this kind of problem is the problem of co-design. Several, uh, several authors uh, have studied this, this problem. We can uh, uh, cite the, the following name, like Liberzon, for example, or Mitter, Johansson, uh, Lemon Friedman, and so on, uh, and provide several uh, perspectives uh, in the context, in particular in the context of a finite dimensional system, but some people have also started to study this kind of problem for partial differential equation, like Friedman and Silivanov, for example, or the, 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 for example, the result I will present uh, during this talk. So I would like just to focus on two uh, kinds of uh, communication elements. The first one uh, is a space quantization. So what is a space quantization? It's represented, for example, like this, in particular in a, a logarithmic, logarithmic quantizer. Uh, we support that uh, the real information is in fact truncated and support that the, the state of the system is a Z. And instead to have access to Z, we will have access to Q of Z, that is this quantity. And if we take a, a very simple example, for example, support that Z is equal to P, pi, and the, the real uh, value we can obtain will be not the complete value of pi, but only this truncated value. And we need to be able to ensure that uh, despite this truncation, we can continue to guarantee the, the, the stability or the performance of, for the system. The second uh, uh, element of uh, communication, very important, and we will see that we will focus on the second one in this talk, is the problem of time quantization. It is the dual of space quantization. And the time quantization uh, is the fact that we support that we uh, sample the time, the time and the, uh, um, we take only some information at some instant TK. Okay, so we have, for example, this example, support that the state Z is defined by this uh, function cos cosinus. Uh, and instead to inject, to have access to Z, we will, ac uh, we will have access to ZC equal to one. So we can imagine that such a difference between the real 
state we have and the effect the uh, the accessible state we we need to use uh, can completely uh, transform the problem we have to deal so if my phone is uh, ringing i have to stop there sorry sorry for for this interruption okay and uh uh so we need to, to take into account this, and in particular in this uh, talk, we will uh, uh, consider the, the problem of event triggering mechanism. We will define after more precisely what is the event triggering uh, mechanism. And uh, uh, the, the, the fact is we have a plant a controller and we want to inject the controller uh, to the plant only when some events occur. And we can define the, the, the mechanism uh, representing the occurrence of some uh, events uh, from depending on the time, for example, or depending on the state. And in this context, we will see that we, we will focus on the state dependent sampling. So this talk focus on the topic of time quantization. And in this topic, we will focus on the event trigger control. And the objective of the event trigger control is to update the control only when needed. We have computed a controller in uh, continuous time, and we will change the control only when some, occur some events uh, will occur. Okay? And the objective is, in fact, by, by, by uh, doing this, by, uh, to cope with communication, energy consumption, and computation constraints. Uh, and we can uh, find some uh, references uh, like the seminal uh, works from Azen, Tabwada, or Ashtrom. Okay, so we we consider this topic, the event trigger control. But in plus, we want we we want to study this uh, topic when we we consider a partial differential equation system. Okay. Uh, of course, in, in the literature, there exist some uh, uh, studies regarding the event trigger control for a PDE system. Uh, I have uh, listed some, some uh, um, interesting work regarding, for example, parabolic uh, PDE system, uh, hyperbolic PDE system, or abstract infinite dimensional system. And more recently, also some uh, uh, more complex PDE system like dispersive PDE system like KDV or Schrodinger equations. Okay, so in this uh, talk, we consider a, a, a simpler system. It's uh, the, the damped wave equation described by this uh, condition, uh, this uh, the condition, sorry, this system where alpha here is the damping coefficient and omega is an open bounded domain in which uh, evolve the, the space, the state, the space uh, uh, X, okay? And we have the uh, boundary condition and the initial condition described like this. We can imagine that this kind of system uh, allow to model some uh, uh, elastic membrane vibrating around uh, some position. Uh, and submitted to, to external friction, as for example, in, in this uh, book or in this uh, article paper. Okay, so we consider this, uh, this system. And now here, the control is represented by this term. And it is clear from this definition that the control is continuous in time. Okay, and we are interested by what happens now if we decide to uh, sample the, the time t? And therefore, we are interested to uh, trigger the implementation of the control term minus alpha uh, partial uh, differential in time of z. Okay, so we want to consider certain instant tk, uh, and we want to define a certain mechanism in order to implement this controller. Uh, and we will support that if we have two instant of uh, uh, sam sampling, tk and tk plus one, for example, between tk and tk plus one, we consider that this term will be uh, held constant, okay? So classically, if we have a, a finite dimensional system, we will consider that we, we add a, a zero 
order order in the loop in order to keep constant the the control between two uh, and successive uh, uh, sampling instance. Okay. Uh, the last uh, thing to be uh, um, mentioned is the fact that uh, here we do not consider classical uh, periodic sampling. The, uh, sam the entire sampling time denoted tk plus one uh, defined by tk plus one minus tk is not assumed to be constant. It can be time varying and uh, we do not assume that we have a periodic uh, events. Okay, so now the closed loop system is transformed like this. That is, instead to have uh, a continuous in time uh, term here, we have a, a sample time, um, sample term, because this term is depending on TK. And now, instead to have just R plus representing the, the space for T, we have the interval TK and TK plus one. So, and we support that the triggering instant are ordered because it's a sec sequence uh, like this, where T0 is an uh, initial instant is equal to zero and T1 and T TK and so on. Okay, so we are interested by uh, addressing the following objective. We want to design a triggering mechanism in order to guarantee the uh, well poseness of the closed loop system, the avoidance of Zeno behavior and the exponential stability of the system. Uh, the avoidance of Zeno behavior, uh, what is the Zeno behavior phenomena? Uh, is the, the fact that we can uh, uh, infinitely, we, we can have infinitive, um, inti infinitely many updates in a bounded time interval. And it is uh, uh, impossible to have this because otherwise we will have, we will have a, a, a consummation extremely uh, um, I of the, the, the bandwidth, for example, of the system. But we can just focus on a very simple definition. We can say that a sequence of even instant TK presents best, uh, Zeno behavior if at least one of the following condition is uh, verified, that is TK plus one minus T TK is equal to zero for some K, or the limit when K is converting to the infinity of tk plus one minus tk is equal to zero. And we can denote that if we have this quantity, then we have the, 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 the guarantee that there exists some accumulation point. And we, we, have, we, we can intuitively uh, keep in mind that in order to prove that we have, we, we can avoid Zeno behavior, we need to avoid that this case can arrive. That is, we, we have to avoid that there exists some accumulation point. Okay. In order to solve this control objective, we will use uh, the energy of the system. And we can define the energy of the system uh, like the sum of the kinetic and potential energies. And we can define like this, uh, this uh, quantity E described here. And because we have the uh, system in continuous in time, and we have a, 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 a the, we are interested by considering that the input, that is the control, is sampled in time, we will introduce the error um, or the deviation from the uh, continuous time uh, term and the sample term. That is, this term ek, denoted ek, is defined here. We will try the continuous in time term and the sampled time because we sample the time here by, by TK. Okay, so now we can define the event triggering rule uh, from which we can prove something. We define the uh, event triggering rule like this, where T0 is equal to zero. And here we will try E, the energy, EK, the deviation between the continuous in time uh, signal and the sample signal. And gamma is a design parameter. Okay, so what is the meaning of this? Between two instants of sampling TK and TK plus one, we have this quantity, uh, this condition satisfied. That is, we do not update the control. And as soon as we have the, the quantity EK greater than this quantity, then we update the control. Okay, so in a certain sense, we measure the deviation between the, the last sample state and the current on, and we, we measure this and we compare with a certain proportion of the current energy of the system. 
And if we have this, we update the system uh, control. Okay, so now we can rewrite the closed loop system by using the deviation EK I defined previously. And we have this following system. Okay, it's exactly the same. And it is interesting to see that if I support that, I forget the triggering mechanism. In this case, EK, EK will be equal to zero. So this term disappear and this term disappear also. It's directly R plus, okay? We can note that this kind of uh, uh, event triggering rule is static because it's a static condition, uh, because we do not have a, a new uh, internal dynamical variable uh, as it is, it is uh, uh, sometimes done in the literature, in particular in the seminar work from Antoine Girard. Uh, the, the previous event triggering control is also different from uh, uh, some of uh, uh, definition in the literature, because uh, in the literature, for example, in the papers uh, listed here, if I uh, come back to, to this definition, the, the authors add here some terms depending on the time and the initial uh, condition for the energy. I will command this after. It can be very simple to prove that we have no Zeno behavior, but it, it is difficult to prove the stability for this, uh, this system. And we can have some strange uh, behavior for the closed loop system. So we define the event triggering rule without this additional term as in the literature. So, uh, in order to, to just uh, uh, have a quick look on the well uh, uh solution, we need to define the maximal uh, capital T uh, under which we have a solution for our system. And we define uh, this uh, uh, instant capital T like this. And from this, by using some results from the literature dealing with the solutions for the wave equation in the continuous time, we can prove that we have solution also for this system, okay? And it is interesting to just not now, and we will see after how we can use this, that by defining the maximal time for which we can guarantee that we have a solution for our system, we will use also this time, uh, maximal time T, in order to prove that we have no uh, Zeno behavior for the system. And in particular, we will prove that the fact that uh, we have a solution, existence of solution for uh, capital T equal to plus infinity, we can prove that we will um, avoid the, the existence of accumulation point for the sequence and therefore the avoidance for uh, Zeno behavior. Okay, so we have the first uh, 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 result and we can, uh, by using some classical uh, assumption on the set omega, for any initial condition Z0, Z1 uh, belonging to this uh, space, we can prove that we have a unique strong solution to our system, closed loop system, including the event triggering mechanism, satisfying this condition that is Z, the solution belong to this space, okay? In order to prove this, uh, we use the, the very similar proof to previous work with uh, uh, Lucie Baudouin. And the, the, the proof is mainly based on the fact that we can use induction, proof by induction, by considering uh, uh, the interval T0, T1, T1, T2, and, and so on. And by using also some results from the literature, in particular, the, the, this theorem in this uh, paper. Okay, so it's a first result, but I would like uh, to focus uh, rather in, in this talk on the zero, zeno behavior avoidance and on the stability. Okay, now we want to prove that we have a system with a part, uh, 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 continuous in time part and a discrete time part. We need to prove that this combination between continuous time and discrete time is not, uh, not so bad for the, the behavior of the closed loop system and in particular in terms of zeno behavior. In order to prove that we have no Zeno behavior, you need to have a, an intermediate result. And in particular, you need to prove that we can bound the energy, upper and lower bound the energy, like in this uh, equation uh, 11, okay? And we can prove that there, 
exists some constant C positive uh, such that we can guarantee that we have uh, this uh, uh, double inequality for the energy where E0 denotes the uh, initial uh, energy for, for, the, for E. In order to have the, some ingredients, uh, quick ingredients of the proof, uh, we compute the time derivative of E and we bound the, uh, the absolute value of E like this from this quantity. We will try, of course, this quantity. And we imagine directly that if we remove this, we will recover a classical result. We apply the Grunewald uh, lemma in order to have this first double inequality. And after, by using some tricks, by rewriting E at the instant TK, E at the instant TK plus one, we can prove that we will obtain this quantity by removing some instant TK uh, TK, uh, TK in this expression in order to retrieve this. Okay, so it's not so important. We have just to, to keep in mind this uh, uh, double bound for the energy. And see is a certain uh, uh, positive uh, uh, constant. And I think C depends on uh, alpha and also of uh, gamma, the design parameter of the triggering. So as I mentioned uh, before, in order to uh, uh, prove that we have no accumulation, proof, um, accumulation pro, uh, point for the second TK, uh, and therefore no uh, Zeno bear view, we want, to prove, we want to ensure that T will be equal to the infinity. Okay, it's exactly summarized in the following result. Okay. And now in order to, to, to have a look on the proof for this, we can uh, take inspiration from the, the, the way to prove the avoidance of Zeno behavior for the context of finite, finite dimensional system, that is for uh, ODE uh, system. And we can first rewrite the event triggering condition I defined previously. And we can, if we, we, we keep in mind the, the condition, we can say, okay, we trigger, we update the control if this quantity is greater than one. Okay, so from this, by taking inspiration, for example, from the, the, the seminar work from Tabu Adwa, we can define the following function phi from this. And the, the, in the literature dealing with this problem in the context of ODE system, uh, we, we study the dynamics of this system, this function, sorry. And by uh, keeping in mind that when I take TK, t equal to tk, this quantity is equal to zero because by definition, e t e k is equal to zero, okay? Because remember, we have this definition, okay? If I put tk here, this quantity will be equal to zero, okay? So this quantity is equal to zero and we treat when this quantity is converging to one. So we want to study what happens between for phi between zero and one. Okay, so to do this, we will study the uh, time derivative of phi, which can be defined like this, and we will study what happens for this uh, time derivative. And we can use uh, several uh, computations and some tricks, and in particular, we can use some, uh, 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 we can use uh, the Cauchy Schwartz inequality and the previous le lemma. Uh, intermediate regarding the, the upper and lower, lower and upper bound for uh, the energy. And we can bound the time derivative of phi, phi dot, by this quantity, okay? Where here, the uh, quantity big A is defined like this, and uh, B is defined like this, where C1 depends on the, the previous, the first, condition, the first result regarding the existence of solution. And we can prove that because we have some uh, existence of solution, we can bound uh, the, the certain quantity of the system. And we can prove that there exists a certain condition, um, constant C1 depending on the initial condition. And this quantity B is defined like this. Okay, so now we can integrate this quantity between tk and tk plus one, that is two successive uh, sampling instant. And uh, uh, by 
really speaking, supposing, uh, taking into account that we have phi at the instant tk equal to zero and phi at the instant where I update my control is equal to one, I will obtain this quantity. And then we can prove by contradiction that if we support that t is finite, and if we support that tk is equal to um, capital T and k is converging to the infinity, this quantity will converge to zero. So we will obtain a uh, contradiction. And the only possibility to, to keep this equality is to have t equal to the infinity in order to have this quantity converging to the infinity and therefore uh, greater than one, okay? And it is interesting to remark the, the, the following, uh, the, the, to do a, a sort of parallel with the uh, ODE systems case, because when we deal with this quantity uh, for a, a classical uh, um, differential equation, uh, in general, we want to prove that this quantity is bounded and we can put this uh, and put this quantity at the left and we will obtain one over this quantity, uh, let down this quantity. And we will prove that this, if we have a differential equation, we can prove that this quantity will be fi finite, fixed, not depending on the time. And therefore we will obtain a sort of dual time for the system. That is a certain time between two successive uh, uh, sampling time. Here it's impossible to do this. It's more complex because t uh, has to be infinite, uh, has to be equal to the infinity. So we cannot prove exactly the same. So we can prove the absence of Zeno solution by, but by considering another way to do this, by considering that we can prove that there is no accumulation points for the seconds. And it is done by proving that we have indeed t equal to the infinity, which is completely coherent with the problem of existence of solution. The last result we have is the notion of stability. Now we want to prove that we have the stability. And then we can do also a certain parallel with the ODE system. And we have the following uh, uh, results. Support, of course, we know alpha. Alpha is fixed, is the damping parameter. And assume that there exists positive scalar, gamma, lambda one, lambda two, delta and epsilon. Epsilon satisfying this quantity where C omega is the uh, Poincaré uh, constant. And uh, uh, if there exists uh, these quantities, positive scalars, such that this matrix is uh, um, definite negative, where phi two two and phi four four are defined like this, from these quantities. Uh, then for any initial condition uh, belonging to the space as previously, the, we can guarantee that the closed loop system is exponentially stable with a certain decay rate delta. In other one, we can prove uh, that the, error, the energy satisfied this uh, uh, inequality with here the delta, okay? Some sketch of the proof, because I think it's interesting. Uh, we consider the following Yapunov function where epsilon is a positive scalar here, depending on, on quantity of the system. Uh, and remember that we need to have this and we compute, uh, we can compute the relation between V, the Yapunov function and the energy E. And we will obtain this by using uh, several tricks and in particular, the Cauchy-Schwartz and Poincaré inequalities with some uh, quantity C1 and C2 defined like this. And we can, from this, compute the uh, time varying of V dot, and we will obtain this. And we can write this in a compact form uh, that is a quadratic form involving, involving a certain vector, psi, describe it like this, where we retrieve the delta Tz, Ek, and the gradient of Z and this following matrix. And it is interesting to, to say, okay, is it possible to prove that this quantity is negative? Because we want to prove that this quantity is negative in order to have, uh, to obtain V dot uh, plus two delta V negative, then 
V dot uh, neg um, less than uh, minus two delta V. And we can prove then we have the exponential stability. But here we can uh, note the following. We have a zero on the diagonal. So this matrix has no sign. We cannot prove that this quadratic form is the directly uh, definite negative. So you need to have some information about the system. And we can do this. To do this, we will add all the constraints we have uh, on the system. And in particular, we have two constraints to take into account. First, the Poincaré inequality. Okay, so this, the point, the, oh, sorry, the Poincaré, Poincaré inequality is the following condition. Okay, we can take this condition and rewrite this condition uh, as a quadratic form. And we can rewrite this condition like this, where M2 is a diagonal matrix with element minus one, zero, zero, C omega square. Okay, by using exactly the same uh, uh, augmented vector here. Okay. The second constraint you have, of course, is the event trigger, triggering law, okay? Because we are uh, proving that V dot has to be negative, we support that uh, during the, the time where V dot is negative, we do not update the control. So we can verify that we have this constraint, okay? So we can rewrite this constraint as a quadratic form uh, like this, where in this case, we can by developing the, the thing, we have M3 is a diagonal matrix, zero, gamma, minus one, gamma. Okay, so now we have a first condition involving this quadratic form, that is V dot plus two delta V. And we have two quantity positive, this one and this one. And now we can use the S procedure in order to combine, to combine several quadratic forms. And in order to, now we want to prove that we have this quantity. Why it is interesting? Because due to the fact that C1 and C2 are two positive uh, non-negative quantity, lambda one and lambda two are two positive scalar. If I put this quantity here, it's clear that I will obtain V dot plus two delta V less than minus lambda one C1 minus lambda two C2, and it will be negative. So I will solve my problem. So now I write this quantity, and it is a sufficient condition, of course. If this condition is satisfied, then my condition on V dot is satisfied. I can rewrite this condition as a quadratic form like this. And by defining uh, big phi equal to M1 plus lambda one M2 plus lambda two M3 from this, where the M1, M2, M3 are previously defined, I will obtain the relation 15, that is this relation, okay? So now, if the relation 15 is satisfied, it means that V will satisfy V dot plus two delta V negative. That is, if I integrate the condition, I will obtain this one. And by using the relation between V and E, I can obtain directly this quantity. And this quantity, this equation, sorry, correspond to the fact that I want to prove the exponential stability. And I can complete the, the proof. OK? So it is a very nice result. But the question you can have is, OK, it's very nice. Uh, it's a, a more constructive that just said, OK, there exists some constant. But how I can exhibit the, the, the value of the constant? Okay, so is it possible to prove that this inequality has always a solution? And the answer is yes, we can prove this. And we can just use some trick. Uh, usually, we use this, this kind of trick for EDE system. And uh, when we, pro we provide some LMI conditions, we use a change of variable. So we define gamma bar like the, the product between lambda two and gamma. And now we have two uh, uh, decision variable, lambda two and gamma bar, okay? And it's clear if I find, I find lambda two and gamma bar, I will come back to gamma by inversing lambda two, okay, from this. So now I can rewrite the big phi of the, the theorem from this, where phi for four is defined like this, okay? And now I can prove that this uh, quantity is always feasible, okay? To do this, I can 
uh, summarize the following uh, result and suppose I put delta equal to zero here, this condition is always feasible. That is always admit a solution lambda one, epsilon, gamma bar, lambda two. Okay. And therefore, from this first condition, first condition I can prove, I can prove that there always exists a positive scalar different from zero, such that this quantity satisfies. And if this, much, this uh, inequality is satisfied, the condition of the theorem is satisfied. Just some uh, uh, ingredients of the proof. Uh, we will write um, phi phi zero when we put delta zero equal to zero like this. And we can use uh, some habitual tricks when we uh, work with LMIs, in particular the sure complement in order to uh, uh, remove some terms. And we can prove that by using true complement and some tricks, we can prove that this, con this matrix is always positive, um, definite negative, okay? So now I can rewrite phi like phi zero, this quantity plus delta multiplying this matrix. So due to the fact that I am able to prove that this quantity phi zero is always uh, negative definite, it is clear that if I choose, because epsilon will be fixed, due to the fact that this quantity is negative. And if I prove that this quantity is negative, I, 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 the meaning is I am able to find lambda one, epsilon, lambda two, gamma bar, okay? So it is clear that I can choose a very small delta, at least very small, in order that this quantity remain uh, negative definite. And I prove my, my last result, okay? So uh, I don't know if I have time to, to just uh, give some, some uh, elements uh, regarding the, the example. Yes, Sophie, so, you have time. Okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, so no, we consider uh, the following uh, set omega for one dimensional wave equation. Uh, we consider the following uh, initial condition Z, Z0 and Z1 like this. We uh, put the dumping coefficient alpha equal to one. And by using some uh, LMI solver, we can find the solution lambda one, lambda two, gamma by using the, the previous gamma bar and delta and epsilon solution such that uh, uh, condition 15 is uh, uh, feasible. And uh, we can prove that we have the stability of the system, okay? In this, uh, this first result, we do not use any optimization uh, uh, criterion, but we, we should do this, uh, but we can just uh, illustrate that uh, the influence of gamma. And we can say that if we uh, minimize gamma, we will have uh, uh, more frequent updates for the control. But we, can, we, can, we could also uh, illustrate uh, this by using some uh, adequate optimization uh, problem. So, uh, here, this quantity denotes the fact that f of t is equal to minus alpha uh, delta t z because we compare with several uh, controllers. And here, just to, to have a, a quick look, we have the continuous in time controller minus alpha delta z uh, delta t z. And here we have the, uh, the uh, sample control loop. Oops, sorry. Okay, so we can. Uh, see that the uh, update times are not regular. And uh, there is a large variation in the magnitude of the continuous in time controller like this, okay? Uh, and we can uh, start to conclude that the event trigger control approach uh, seems to be energy efficient, okay? So now we can co uh, compare several uh, controller, the, uh, uh, always the, the blue line, the, sorry, the continuous in time control in blue line, the uh, event trigger control we propose uh, in black dotted uh, line. I don't know if it is uh, very clear for you. And also we can support that we fix a certain uh, controller. For example, we fix instead to have uh, uh, minus alpha uh, delta t z, we fix uh, uh, here the control equal to minus z1, z1 being the uh, initial condition. 
it is in gray green line here. So uh, it is maybe more clear here. We have the fixed controller, the uh, continuous in time controller, the event trigger controller. And after we can also imagine that we can compute uh, a periodic sampling control like this. And it is in red here, okay? But, uh, ah, yes, and after we compute also, we compare with the uh, event trigger control in the literature using the fact that in the triggering conditions, there is this additional term and uh, we fix theta equal to 2.5 as in the literature and we obtain this uh, black uh, curve, okay? So, pop, 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 pop. okay. Uh, we can see that the um, evolution of the energy of the event trigger control is similar, is not so far from the uh, continuous in time uh, control system. So it is a, a good point. Uh, we have choose a, a period two in order to compute the curve, but we have uh, to fix two and we have fixed a certain to, I don't remember uh, what is the to, may, maybe 1.2. Uh, but it is clear that if we search for this periodic uh, to, that is, I will sample my controller at some period to. Uh, after a moment, that is, if I take to uh, greater than 1.2, I, I uh, lost the stability. Okay. Uh, that is my closed loop system with periodic sampling of my control becomes instable. Okay, it's interesting, I think, to, to remark this also. I, I, okay. Uh, so just to conclude my, my talk, uh, I have tried to present some uh, recent results regarding the exponential stabilization of uh, the damped linear wave equation. Uh, by considering an event triggering mechanism, we have provided uh, a sufficient matrix inequality basic condition. Uh, we have proved that we have the avoidance of the no-behavior, and we have also proved that we have the well poseness uh, uh, and the existence of solution for the system. It is very important to note that uh, we have no proof if we search to have periodic um, sampling. We can just do, do this uh, by, by uh, simulation and work what is the, the limit of the period uh, from which we, we lost the stability. Of course, we can imagine to have uh, uh, several future works. Uh, for example, we have no consider an additional source term on the system. And we can do this by considering in plus of minus alpha delta z a, a certain uh, source term in plus, and in this case the uh, open loop system will be the closed the open loop system will be unstable. It can be very interesting to do this. We can of course consider uh, other classes of uh, uh, partial differential equations, uh, for example like the beam equation uh, studied for example in this in this paper from, from Crepo and Prier. We can also imagine that we have some uh, uh, nonlinearity affecting the input. For example, we do uh, we did some some studies with uh, Christophe Prieur and uh, Juan Gomez da Silva uh, when we consider the wave equation with uh, saturation on the input. That is, instead to have minus alpha delta T z, we have uh, saturation of minus alpha uh, this delta z um, z. And of course, uh, we can also imagine that uh, in order to do this, we we have uh, uh, we need to have the measure on Z, but we can imagine that we have no access to this measure, and we can imagine to 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 have more realistic assumption. And for example, we can imagine to use observer or spatially sample controllers. And uh, there is some uh, some uh, references. Uh, from which is based my, my talk. Thanks a lot for your attention. And I am happy to, to answer to, to question if I need, I, I can. Okay, thank you, Dr. Sophie Tarulich. And that's some nice, excellent.
talk about your work, interesting, very interesting. And now we are in the time of questions, okay? <laughs> the, the microphone is open. Está abierto el micro para alguien que quiera hacer preguntas. ¿Alguna pregunta? Todo ha estado tan detalladito que en realidad se entiende y se buscan las aplicaciones. Uh, Dr. Sophie, uh, you, you can talk us about some, uh, well, you, you mentioned some of vibration control theory, and but you know if uh, there is a relation with some other a class of applications in biology or maybe in, in, in any other one? Uh, you mean for, for the, the event trigger control? Yeah, or the trigger event, because this is the event trigger, is this very interesting? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it is a, a, a very good uh, question because uh, this, this, uh, this kind of problem is, in fact, issue from the computer science uh, part, Correct. and uh, because the, the the this problem is very useful when we we deal with uh, networks, uh, in order to reduce the 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 energy, uh, the consumption of energy, uh, or the, the the communication between the the different nodes. So typically, it's a, a, a clear application of this. Uh, imagine you have a, a networks. Uh, you will use this in order, for example, uh, not necessarily to update the control, but just to, to transmit the information from a, a, a not one or the one. Mm -hmm. uh, I think there is also some uh, interesting uh, um, application because, uh, uh, for example, with other uh, colleagues, we work on the problem of control of anesthesia death of anesthesia during a surgery. And uh, maybe we can also imagine that the, we, we can imagine that uh, we can uh, um, inject a drug uh, only if some uh, events uh, occurs, uh, some event occurs. So we can also revisit the event trigger control to, um, um, how can I say, to uh, say, okay, now there is this event during the surgery. I have to, to inject a, a new dose of a drug. Uh, um, why this quantity is not uh, greater than this uh, other quantity? Because it's a limit. I have not to, to, to cross. No, no, no problem. I have no to inject a drug. But if I, uh, I have uh, this, this uh, signal, this variable, is approaching this limit, I need to inject a new, uh, okay. a new um, quantity of drug in order to, to keep safe the, the patient. Yes. So we are, we are thinking about this with, with some colleague in, in the hospital in order to revisit this problem in this context. Mm -hmm. Nice, nice, nice. I don't know if it is an it's, it's answer to your question. No, no, yes, yes. <laughs> it gives us a, a lot of ideas about the use of this kind of uh, yeah, and and and, and the, the so the the, the part uh, regarding the the well postness uh, uh, was was done by, by my colleague Lucy uh, and I work in more on the the problem of event trigger control stability and, and avoidance of of uh, Zeno. It was very interesting to see that the the, the proof to ensure the avoidance of Zeno is completely different from the, the finite uh, time or D system. It was not uh, obvious at the beginning because we, we start by trying just to expand the, the condition and we arrive uh, in front of a wall and we said, okay, we, we cannot prove that there exists a, a dwell time. Mm -hmm. We can do this if we had the term uh, as mentioned, uh, as I mentioned before, in the event triggering rule. And I suppose it's a case uh, why in the literature, the, the, the researcher had this, uh, this term, but this term is not so good for the stability. So we can prove the avoidance of Zeno in a clearer way, I can say, 
but for the stability, it's not it's not the case. So nice, thank you. Okay, más? Alguna otra pregunta? Okay, Diego, si puedes hacerla. You can ask the question. Uh, hello. Hello. Uh, okay. So uh, as soon as I understand, your control is uh, distributed everywhere, right? Yeah. And what happens if your control is, is localized? I mean. Yeah, it, it can be uh, more complex. We are uh, currently uh, in progress with this um, because it's a case for the Schrodinger equation. Um, the the we have a, 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 a not exactly the same but very similar uh, event triggering control but the proof for the Zeno behavior is completely different and the proof for the 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 stability also <laughs> so we keep the the event triggering uh, uh, mechanism but uh, after we need to, to consider that we have uh, some uh, an, part of the domain for, for a part of the system. So it's, it's more complex, but we can do this. We, we are in, in, in currently in, in studying this with uh, Florent and, and Lucie. Mm -hmm. and, and, and did you thought about the possibility to, I mean, you, you you, you you control act uh, in some interval, right? Mm -hmm. And do you thought about uh, to change the the local region where the control is acting in order to vary uh, the whole domain? Mm, uh, no, no, it's a good good uh, good aspect. The good question. No, no, no. We have not uh, studied this, but it could be very interesting to do this. Yeah. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Diego. And thank you to you, Sophie, in this special day that we are mentioned the International Day of Women in Mathematics. You are honored with this talk to all of, of us. And then this is a great, a great uh, thing that we, we want to uh, great for you, grateful for you. Thank you very much, Sophie, for your Thank you. Thank, thank you to you for, for the invitation. Okay, thank you too. Sorry okay, the, Sandra. You. Sorry for my French English, but uh, okay. <laughs> ah, that was excellent. Your English is very nice. <laughs> thank you very that much. It's a okay, so pleasure to have you here in this day that we are trying to, to do some special edition you know, in your celebrated this day that I hope it will be very, we have a very nice uh, meeting next, next week. Okay. okay. okay.